just starting to feel. Mm -hmm. I think when you have success, your first reaction is yippee, and your second reaction is, in the words of Peggy Lee or Joey Lever, is that all there is? And I think probably if you think about it, that was about the time when Elton and Bernie had realised that they'd made it. They, they were two or three years down the road, and they were very successful. And I, I guess, on reflection now, you can see, even if Bernie didn't meet it at the time, there is a bit of, I'm not sure it's what I want. Often, the fulfilment of an ambition can be worse than not fulfilling it. And from Bernie's point of view, I mean, that lyrics, if you read it, I mean, and, and listen to it, it's like, I want to go back where I came from, Lincolnshire, farming, back, you know, just get me back there. Maybe he was getting disillusioned. You can ask him, he's coming in after me. Uh, but I certainly wasn't. I was having a ball. <laughs> I don't think it was about disillusionment of fame. I think it was more... <laughs> That's my arm. I think it was more about this battle I had about being sort of a kid in? coming to town, <laughs> being originally a little out of my depth, being a little slightly sort of Dick Whittington tale. You know, a country it's not kid sweet anymore. The city, but at the same time, yes, I think it could have been the all-encompassing world of fame, you know, uh, could be rock and roll. You know, is it, is it everything it's cracked up to be? Possibly not. <laughs> The nature of Bernie and Elton's relationship is completely unique, really, in modern rock and roll terms. I mean, it has its antecedents in, in Broadway, probably, but this sort of you wash, I'll dry arrangement that they had, whereby Bernie Taupin would just send Elton John the lyrics. It wouldn't, they wouldn't even...